he says. Yes, I got a nod. That's good. I remembered, remembered correctly. And he's going to be talking about PR surveys in the media. Sounds like an interesting one. Okay, yeah, so as I mentioned before, I'm from Merseyside Skeptic Society, and uh, amongst the other stuff that we do, I really love to look at what's on in the news and how much it's actually true. So bear in mind, because it's about that, this will feature the Daily Mail. If anyone's offended, please leave now. Uh, let's see. So Jeremy Clarkson has the largest penis in showbiz. Uh, this is what The Sun said. Um, now, you might have the same reaction I did, which was to assume that this is a typo, and it's actually saying Jeremy Clarkson is the biggest penis in showbiz. But trust me, the typing is accurate, but the story is complete bullshit. Um, you might wonder how this story came about. You might think maybe there were some scientists sat around, looked at photos of Jeremy Clarkson, worked out his body proportions, and extrapolated the perfect formula for the size of his penis. You'd be wrong. That's not how this came about, not at all. Um, you might think maybe some unlucky work experience kid came at the lab one day to find the entire population of British television lined up along one wall with their trousers around their ankles and a tape measure in their hand. It wasn't even as accurate as that. It wasn't even as robust as that. It was worse. Essentially, the way this whole came about is they asked some women to guess. They gave women a list of 30 names and asked them to rank them in order of penis size uh, and, and, and give them a, a, a judgment of how big that is. It's complete nonsense, spurious nonsense, based on nothing, but it still made the news as if this is true, as if this is genuine. Of course, there is a right answer. I mean, Jeremy Clark is a man, presumably has a penis. I mean, I don't know. If you're able to find him and take his you know, underpants down and take a look, you'll be able to figure out if he had a big or small penis. But until you do that active observation, there's no way of knowing if his penis was big or small. It's essentially Schrodinger's cock is, is essentially what you're looking at. Um, but this whole thing was just an advert for an online dating website uh, called FBuddy. And if there's anyone naive in the audience, we'll pretend the F stands for friendly. Um, and it was commissioned by a, an online polling company called OnePoll, who are a bit of, of an obsession of mine. Uh, one poll are very prolific at getting nonsense into the news. Between Christmas and New Year of last year, they got 25 stories, pretty much word for word, into the Daily Mail in one week. Uh, not just about sex and Jeremy Clarkson, but loads of other things. But they're really, really prolific, and these stories occur all the time, and one poll are behind them. Uh, here's some recent ones that one poll uh, have had in the news, um, saying essentially, uh, Greg's the baker's telling you that if you buy your girlfriend flowers, she'll presume you're cheating. This was a survey they did. I mean, I don't know if you're supposed to buy her a pasty or something instead. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, also, uh, that British people feel sexy in the summer was by Costa Coffee. It's nonsense. Um, how one poll do it is they pay people 10p for every survey they take, but you don't get any money until you've made 40 quid. So you're there trying to get through surveys as fast as possible, otherwise you never see a penny. And it means you don't really put any attention into anything. It means you come up with bullshit like this. Uh, women make terrible bosses. This was in the Daily Mail, it was in loads of other newspapers as well, um, that women are terrible bosses, even women admit that men make better bosses. I know this came from one poll, I know this was bullshit, because I took part in this study. I actually uh, registered for one poll, here's question number one. Uh, who do you prefer to work for, men or women? It's a 50-50 choice. You don't get to say, I don't care. You don't get to say they're equal. You have to choose. If you want 10 pence for your survey, you have to make a choice. So you do. You, you put your dime down on men, for example, and you get to this question. Why do you prefer men? Is it because they're easier to reason with? They're more professional? No time of the month? You know, awful stuff. Less mood strings. This all came up in the news, um, but you have to choose one if you, if you want your 10 pence. So you pick one at random and you carry on through and you know, wash yourself down so you don't feel too dirty. You come to this question. Why do women make bad bosses? Bear in mind, question one, I had to pr choose which I prefer to work for. Now I'm saying women are bad bosses. They're putting words in my mouth, and those are the words that make the headlines. This is how this comes about. It's a totally biased question, and it was the spin of the story. And the, the reasons women are bad bosses are even better. You've got their hormonal, their bitch all the time, they're highly strong. They lie. Two words, they lie. That made it into the Daily Mail. It made it into every single newspaper that ran this story. Now, you'd expect this stuff from 1910, not 2010. It's sexist bullshit. Um, how do you spot this kind of stuff in the news? Well, it's not easy. I mean, PR companies, their job is to try and make it difficult. But there's one quick rule. If you see a company name in the fourth paragraph, there's a very good chance that they're paid for the survey. It's, um, there's a re whole reason behind it I haven't got time to go into, but look out for it. This is a great one. Um, at last, guys, what turns women on and it's not chocolate? Essentially, it's a poll that finds out the five most exciting things in a woman's life. Uh, number one was going on holiday. Number two was motherhood. Uh, number three was sex. Number four was a pay rise. What's number five? You've got about 15 seconds, so shout out. I'll buy you a drink. Anyone? Shopping? Anyone else? Quick? No, 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 no. The correct answer, and you should all have got this, obviously, uh, is... <laughs> nice. Backing a winner on the horses. 
Backing a winner at the races was the fifth most exciting thing. We know this is true because of research carried out by Racing for Change, the horse racing promotion company. <laughs> this made the news. This made the right stuff. This made loose women as if this was real. And it's so sexy to so bullshit. So in summary, uh, look out for these survey stories. Um, always check the fourth paragraph because there's a very good chance you'll see who paid for this. Uh, and also check out my website because I write about this stuff all the time. It's merseysideskeptics.org.uk uh, and that's me on Twitter. And uh, that's me done. <laughs> Thank you very much, Michael. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to just never trust anything I read in the newspaper again. Apart from your stuff, Alistair. I, I believe every bit of that. That's great. Um, so, on to our uh, 